Hey guys, I am in the process of attempting to restore an either old silk or braided nylon fly line. I've got it soaking for about 15-20 minutes in a mixture of about a gallon of um, water, maybe a little less, and about a third of a package of baking soda. It's already in there, it's soaking. It was clear water, you can see it's uh, the varnish and dried dirt and I guess mucilin or whatever else was on there is kind of coming off. It'll get a nice kind of honey color to it, except for maybe some of these grayish areas that might be really dirty, but we'll see. You do this a couple times, run it through like a microfiber cloth a few times when it's wet, and then let it dry, and then you do various, probably four or five different coats of linseed oil, sometimes mixed with varnish. Uh, I'm just gonna do straight boiled linseed oil and, and see what happens. Um, unfortunately, when you run this through cloth to clean it and, and strip the old varnish off, you find out very quickly if these lines are suitable for use anymore. Oftentimes they will break very easily. This one might break, it's probably pretty old. You see some dark spots that have me concerned, but that's a good test to see if it's got some integrity left to it and it's fishable. But we'll find out shortly. Okay, it's been 20 minutes. I am now at the point I'm going to rinse this off with cold water and it looks a heck of a lot cleaner. Those dark areas are nowhere near as dark as they were, so a second bout should make it all the same color. I'm gonna rinse it in cold water. And this is probably a, a trout size line, probably a, a D or an E. And to translate to current fly fishing line weights, it's probably a four or five. I've got a six or seven upstairs. This might even be a three. And this is much, much narrower. And they did by diameter. There was like D was six, I think, or maybe that's five. No, D was five, C was six, B was, no, B was eight, C was seven. D, I think, was five, maybe six. Um, but it was by diameter, so if you had silk, which was heavier than nylon, you had a different weight line, even though it's the same diameter. So they've luckily moved away from that designation and gone strictly to weight. Look how dirty this is. It was clear water with baking soda when I started. So I'm gonna repeat the soak with warm water, and it's cold right now, so let's fill it up with warm water. I'll add some baking soda, and we'll soak it for another 20 minutes. And actually, in the meantime, I do need to, uh, I wish I hadn't put it all together like that because it's all tangled now. I might just soak it again and then rub the stuff off and then worry about untangling it once it's dried. So I'll add the baking soda and uh, get it soaking again. So another 20 minutes. We are done soaking. What I'm going to do now is pour this out and replace it with cold, clear water. And then I will pull the line through the wet microfiber cloth to get any of the dirt and resin on there that's remaining. And then it'll dry for a few days and then the next stage stage will be to um, apply the linseed oil. So let me find the end and we will start to run it through the cloth. This may or may not be something I can do on the video very easily. There's an end. I might I might show a couple minutes of it. 
I do this, just run it through the cloth. And this is a good test. You apply pressure to clean it off, but that pressure is also testing the integrity of the line. And as you can see, I've got a ball of line there that I'm have to deal with. But this is the step. Just let me show it here better. Just slowly work it through wet microfiber cloth like this. And that cleans all of the remaining um, varnish, dirt, what have you, off of the, the line. And this one's actually pretty clean, so it's in fairly good shape. But now I've got to deal with untangling this mess. And I'm not going <laughs> to hold you guys to watching all of this. But I'll do a little bit more of the the cleaning just so you can see um, I'll go to clean spot on the the cloth so you can see that it's actually coming out pretty nice and I'm not getting any breakage oftentimes the breakage would would be happening at this point as you can hear it's making some noise so I'm applying some pressure and that's a good sign so far that it's going through it's coming out clean and not breaking so yeah that's a good sign i think this is a nylon line you notice the color is very light i think the silk is typically darker but i've read that the kind of yellowish bright or brighter lighter lines are typically nylon you can always do a match to the end of the line to see if it kind of melts or, or burns into ash and uh that's the, the overall test i'm not too worried about it you treat them the same way, you you restore them the same way. So that's all I care about. So that's it for the, the cleaning stage. I will take care of finishing this off. And then I will show you the application of linseed oil. Okay, we're on to the next step. I've got some oil linseed oil. And I've got actually three lines here that need to get finished. Um, one's significantly darker than the other, so it might actually be a silk line. The other ones are probably, the lightest one certainly is, is nylon, most likely. And the other two may be silk, I'm just not sure. And I'm going to soak them in here. I thought this thing was a lot bigger than it is. I'll just stuff them down in there something safe that I can soak them in and not worry if anything happens to it. And this linseed oil is ancient. hope it works. But we will soak it probably overnight. Fill it. It's got a ways to go. I want to use all of it. Let's try it out. There it goes. It's getting a little. It's got a funky smell. I've never used it before. I might need a bigger bucket for doing this but I don't have one right at this moment so we will try the best we can with this method I know there's other methods where you run it through a, a cloth soaked in this we might end up having to do that but I want to soak this as much as I can to uh, get it a good coating because this is what waterproofs it and then you apply the muslin when you are fishing it to uh, keep it waterproof. Yeah, that's actually not bad. So we will let this soak for a couple hours at least and then uh, we will probably do the cloth method to uh, put the remaining coats on. There we go. 
and uh, that should do it. Well, I've let the uh, fly line sit for a little while, maybe 35, 40 minutes, something like that. Um, I was thinking about it and realized I probably don't just want to let it sit like this. Oh, that's nice and soaking. I'll turn it over. What I'm going to do at this point is soak part of this cloth. There's a, a website over my waders, and there's a nice article talking about restoring silk fly lines. And it applies for the, the braided nylon as well. So what I'm going to do is take these small ones out first. There's two of them. Oh, that's the dark one. I think that's both of them. Yeah. I'll let that one just soak some more. And one thing I don't want to do is let these lines kind of develop bumpy. I mean, they're going to have bumpy edges no matter what, I think. But I think I can limit that. There we go. So that's the probably eight weight line. So what I'm going to do to smooth it out is, and this is a really small one. It's a short line too. It's probably broken at some time in the past. Maybe the best way to do it is start from the other end. The goal here is to pull this through the, the cloth, put an even coat on, then it's going to go in this paper bag that I have beside me on the ground and dry there overnight. It might take a couple days from what I've read. And I'll probably do this coating probably three or four times, something like that. And I want to make sure it goes in there, not on the ground, pick up dirt. And then doing this, it's getting a fairly even coat, and it has soaked already some. So What's happening is it's coating the entire fly line. It's soaked, so it's gone in the interior somewhat. I don't know if I got it all in there. This The narrower line is probably more so. And the paper bag allows ventilation. It's going to dry in there with a relatively even coat. And there's the end of it almost. There's the end. So that one's done. Now let's move on to this other one. I'll put that lid back on. Let's find the end of that and do the same thing. And it's interesting because this was definitely just cloth earlier. And that oil is starting to dry on it. It's getting thick. Um, there we go. So I can, I can see it starting. And, and the reason you put a number of coats is this is actually where a lot of the weight on the fly line comes from. Uh, you can't tell by looking at it when I put it in the, the oil, but it's very light. It's just string, basically. Let's get that so it's falling in here. So the more coats you put on, the heavier the fly line gets. Oh, it's going to tangle here. That's one thing I'm afraid of. So not only does this add weight, this is what waterproofs it. It gives it some, I guess, stiffens it a little bit as well because it's very limber otherwise. I mean, it's just string basically. Hey guys, the 
the first coating dried it's been probably four or five days I was gonna do it earlier and then well the world turned upside down with Ukraine and Russia so finally getting back to it uh, they dried nicely nice kind of stiff feeling they're feeling like fly lines should uh, let me bring this bag closer and uh, so I'm putting coating number two on and this will be the last coating I put on the video there's no need to see me do this two or three more times but I'm just running the dried ones through a saturated microfiber cloth to put another layer on and then just like the first one I will let it dry in the paper bags um, and uh, keep applying I think I'll probably do at least one more coating on the light line and maybe the heavier lines I'll add two more coatings um, just to give it some weight but it, it feels like a caspel fly line now whereas before I did any coatings it felt very much like just loose limp string so this is the method this I'm doing it on the trout line first that's the only one I'm going to do for the video I'll do obviously the other ones and I just let them dry together it doesn't matter and I figure it doesn't hurt anything to uh let them dry together and I'm making a nice tangled mess again that's one thing you have to deal with is these things tangle up so easily uh. Where's that string coming from? Well, anyways, you don't need to see me untangle it, but that is the technique. Uh, thanks for watching. I will, when I have these done, I will certainly be fishing with them this spring for panfish and bass, and I will let you know how it goes.